right. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our next guest speaker. Her name is Candice Johnson, and she's going to be speaking around the theme of Break the Bias. And she will also be talking about her cross-cultural career. Candice is a real estate professional for Archibald Real, uh, sorry, Archibald Property Group. Yeah, Real Estate Group. Yep, <laughs> just a team. Thank you so much, Candice. I really appreciate it. And so one of the reasons I asked Candice to take part in the series and approached her to speak to you today is because she has had such an amazingly varied career. She's worked in so many different contexts and so many different fields. She is a bubbly person. She's such a kind, generous person. And she has joined, with, joined us today for a talk on her career, but also give you all some tips and some advice about dealing with bias in various contexts that you may find yourself confronted with, whether it's in your personal life, in the business world, in the boardroom, wherever wherever it could be. And because Candace has dealt with bias in, well, I would say it, actually on a global context, she's worked in several different countries. Yeah, I, th I think that she is such a motivational person to speak to. And because I know her personally, and I'm very fortunate too, I can extol her virtues endlessly. Um, but yes, yeah, it's such a privilege to know you, Candice, and I'm so glad that you're here today. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it and I look forward to hearing more from you. Yeah, well, thank you so much for that introduction, Jati. And likewise, I'm so glad to know you and you're also very inspirational um, and I appreciate those very kind words that you've uh, said about me. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, would you like me to just uh, go ahead and give you a little bit of background about me? Yeah, absolutely. Please launch in. Yeah, perfect. So yeah, I'm originally from South Africa, uh, Cape Town. I um, left South Africa straight after high school to pursue my professional career in London in the UK. Um, my first job in London was actually at a property auction firm uh, dealing with repossessions. And um, what I found at that firm was um, real introduction to working in the corporate lifestyle, but also um, was surprisingly faced with some biases um, in being from a different culture, as well as um, in a male dominated uh, sort of industry, the property industry, so to speak. Um, so then um, that was a quite of a, a surprise to me. And, and uh, I uh, was faced with a few things that I had to adjust with. Um, and to give you a little bit of more background is that I'm actually, my dad is British. So I used to go to the UK a lot when I was younger. And uh, that for me was even more impactful and strange that I faced these issues, so to speak, when starting in the workforce, because I always thought I was, you know, half British, half South African, so I would fit in easily. But um, that didn't stop because I obviously came from a different culture. Um, after that job, I pursued um, a career in finance. I decided that's what I wanted to be doing. I enrolled at the university um, of um, the UK, but it was actually the London School of Economics um, as an international student, which gave me the flexibility to work full time whilst completing my degree in banking and finance. Um, and then I pursued a, a job in that industry. So I first worked at a small uh, UK family run business, um, dealing with mergers and acquisitions. And that was again, another transition where I was working with a small group of people, a family run business that was quite difficult to get ingrained into being from such a diverse, different culture. Um, and then from that, I ended up working at a US based firm that had just opened up their offices in London. And, and what I found that I really enjoyed about that experience was, although it was a US, UK, a US based firm, their offices um, initially started with just US staff that had been brought over to open the office. Um, but they made a very conscious effort to employ people from all cultures, 
not just British. Um, and so, you know, Europeans, people from Australia, all over. And for me, it was the first time ever that I experienced working with such a diverse community of people, um, but also found that it was so welcoming. Um, and it was um, an eye-opening experience for me working at that firm. They were so, everybody was so um, accepting of everybody's different cultures, etc. And um, that was just great to experience, especially since the past roles, which we probably go into a bit more detail in the interview was, you know, I faced a lot of trials, sort of navigating my way through the previous jobs, although I felt I had a connection to being British, right? Um, and then the other thing that was, was wonderful about um, that firm that I worked at was that, uh, you know, finance in general is seen as a male-dominated industry. And uh, this particular firm, we actually ended up being an all-female trading desk, uh, which is unheard of, especially in London. And uh, it was headed by one of the um, female, strongest characters I know, she's my mentor. Uh, she was head of trading, was a female as well. And she was also the co-MD of the firm, uh, the London-based office. So it was very inspiring to be surrounded by people, strong women like this as well, and to be able to stand um, out from the crowd, so to speak, and represent this firm and, uh, you know, that sort of buy from that bias that you have with finance industry. Um, and then I decided that London life was too fast paced for me and uh, I needed to take a little shift and uh, ended up moving to Vancouver, Canada about five years ago. Um, yeah, and I worked at an investment management firm as well, which was what I was doing in my last job in London. And yeah, that was also a, a massive cultural shift for me personally, um, going from working eight till probably 6.30, 7 o'clock at night in London to working in a culture where they value your personal time and your downtime and so work would finish at four and uh which to me was like afternoon tea time usually um and yeah and you would be told and encouraged to leave the office at four o'clock every day which to me was a very difficult thing to adjust to um I've been so used to working so hard putting in the hours and here we were just being encouraged to go and enjoy your time right after work um, and so that was an interesting experience for me, especially um, since there was a bit more laid back uh, career progression, uh, it wasn't as fast paced, and I, it really took me a while to find how I sat with that. And to be honest, I feel as though I'm not going to fully accustom to that myself because that's not how I work. Um, and then from that, I realized I was not enjoying the financial industry so much anymore. And I did a full 360 and ended up um, pursuing a career in real estate, uh, which is actually where my first job was as well, uh, or first professional job. And uh, also my mom is a real estate agent, so I didn't even realize that that was what I wanted to do. So yeah, I've been doing that for a year or so, and I really enjoy it. And it gives me a bit more freedom as well to figure out my own way of working. Although I'm in a different country, I can now structure my day and work the way I want to do it and not based on a corporate environment that I was so having to sort of stick under or, or follow. Um, so, yeah, that's just a brief overview of my history, my work history and where I've worked and what I've been exposed to. Um, so yeah, I hope that it was helpful. Absolutely. So one of the things that we need to mention as well, Candice, is that you together with Emma have started a women's networking group called Business Before Break. Uh, uh, business Before, Before Business, yeah. Before Business, BB. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was something that you spearheaded because it was 
part of your drive to not only network with different people and women in Vancouver, but also to welcome newcomers, whether they are entrepreneurs or they're small business owners, and really build a community and a community that is supportive and which shares advice. And that is something that you are also using as a tool to bring people together, to break down biases and to learn more about what other people do as well. So could you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. So um, something that you will, if you don't know already in Vancouver, it's quite a quite picky city, but it's also very network driven. So it's sort of a small town mentality. It's about who you know. Um, a lot of jobs don't get posted on online or uh, recruiters aren't used very often here. And so it's word of mouth and it's network here. And I noticed that especially when I shifted into real estate, you know, I'm, I'm not from here originally. I don't have the, the people that most other realtors who are from here have, like your high school, university friends or family, for example. So I realized I needed to find a way to expand my network and a networking group was a great idea. And, and from that, actually, I, I met um, a great mortgage broker. She's a really close friend of mine, as you said, Emma. And we started talking about, you know, it's really hard to get into some networking groups here. They're very strict. Uh, it wasn't really the culture we wanted as well. Um, and we're, I'm an expectant mom. She's, in a mo she's a mom herself. And so you need a bit more flexibility in your schedule. And so we decided to start our own networking group. And, and as you mentioned, it was it's on the premise of bringing together women who are entrepreneurs, have their own business, and are trying to find their feet in a city that is quite difficult to network in. And we, we meet once a week and we discuss our challenges of our business, how to better ourselves, um, we share tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. And it's, it's a great way to bring people together to, to help uplift. Um, and we also do a bit of an accountability um, situation once a week, which we share, you know, what are our goals for the next week? And we hold each other accountable each following week to try and push and pursue each other. So yeah, it's a, it's a great collaborative group. We are still growing, we're in the early stages, but I think it's great to meet other inspiring women who are, like you said, either new to the city or just don't have the network to try and grow their business. And um, I found it already rewarding. We've only just started about a month ago. And yeah, and we're just, we're obviously always welcoming anybody who's interested in joining. Um, it's we just want to learn from each other right and grow from each other especially especially in, in a city that's quite difficult to do that yes absolutely and you know I suppose that I think that a lot of newcomers find oh, I, I, I know that we can speak about Vancouver because that's the city that we know right but I think in a lot of big cities people as as you've mentioned they find that clicks form and the referrals are passed within those clicks or those groups. And so it's very difficult a lot of the time to break those molds and to break barriers and establish. Yeah. And so you, as an outsider or somebody who's come in and who is new and you're an immigrant, for example, you have to then break down uh, people's biases. And I think, you know, I was speaking to a couple of women this week, obviously, for this for this series of talks, and we were just chatting about how things like where you come from really influence people's attitude, right? And yeah. we'll get into to this with you just now, Candice, but like one of the things that we discussed is, you know, the, the fact that when you say that you're from South Africa, for example, people kind of have this either this blank look or or they don't want to work with you anymore because they have this preconceived notion about what Africa is. People make yeah. it like a whole country. It's not a continent. Yeah. 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 And there's a whole lot of negative bias when you mention totally Africa because people think this is way forward and corruption and crime, etc. is rife. Yeah. And, and also when you say things like, you know, um, you've just you've just got to the country 
uh, that also kind of it stands stands against you and you stand out of the crowd but in a bad way because then people think well there's it, almost this belief like well then what can you offer me what can you do for me and I think that it's such a, a harsh reality for many people who are new and they're trying to break this mold and they're trying to break barriers and make connections and because of your past history or because of where you come from there is a lot of bias that's actually held towards towards an individual and yeah. towards you know, whatever your history is in particular yeah. so is that is that something that you have found and I mean you, you can talk personally here but you can also just talk in general with you, you've obviously worked with a lot of, of people from different cultures and different backgrounds so is that yeah. like something that you have noticed yourself yeah, I mean, here, here especially, I feel as though it's a lot of people don't register that I'm South African. Even when I say, they say, oh, you don't sound it, which to me is an insult straight away. <laughs> and people don't realize how it actually hurts when, when someone says that to me. Um, although my accent is mixed and I know that, it's that's a, an initial sort of jab as you may say you, people don't realize that they're doing that but they oh you don't sound South African or you don't look South African or you know I've even had the racial thing thrown in oh you but you're white and I'm just it, it shocks me sometimes <laughs> about that but you know it's um it's upsetting because it's an instant um feeling of oh well they're not accepting of what I'm saying or who I am and it's not done in a malicious way and I get that um but it's it's so true with with the naivety of not maybe working across different cultures I, I get that um you know yeah you face it a lot um I face it ma mainly in the UK um I found that I was confronted with things questions or requests to tone down my accent or and maybe that's why I lock my accent now that's why, probably why what it is but um to tone down my accent because it sounded too aggressive um and then what I realized is that I don't for me my argument was that I'm not being aggressive is that we're as my being from South Africa we're quite direct culturally you know we say it how it is uh we don't fluff up things you know we're, we're straight to the point and and I love that about being South African, um, but some people would take offense to that and would feel as though I was attacking them. So yeah, I had to adjust a little bit because obviously I don't want people to feel like I'm attacking them or taking offense. And that's something that I've had to figure out over the time, you know, how to still be true to my culture and what and who I am, but not offending anybody and trying to fit in a little bit better. So yeah, it's 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 been tough, and I feel like yeah, people don't realize how they can offend you and have a bias towards where you're from. Um, they don't they don't they just they make an insult that they don't realize can hurt and actually affect someone personally, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, so recently, I'll, I'll share with you, Candice, so, so what happened is somebody reached out to me and they said, you know, I'm really interested in working with you. And we were interested in having this training, etc. So then I said, oh, that, that's awesome. I'd really love to work with you. You sound like a really, you know, somebody that I could collaborate with, with and we could, we have several points of synergy. And so, you know, I sent, I sent her some information about courses that I run and I, I didn't realize uh, at the time because I had these designed a while ago, but they still had my South African number. And they also had a number for the Middle East, right? Um, so that because I, I needed to, to have several local numbers where people could call. Yeah. And because I've always worked with South African clients and I still do, I mean, I'm not going to just abandon my South African clients because, you know, I'm now in a different country and they know yeah. that about oh, been loyal clients. And colleagues of mine despite me having moved several times but um, so then she she commented and said oh well I see that you've still got South African uh, number there or something and I said yes I, I am South African and that's why yeah. I've got the contact number there and um, then she just never never got back to me and sort of like sort of cut off all communication which was quite uh, quite strange because I, I was speaking to another speaker, Ngozi, who I'm sure you'll 
we will connect with at some point. But yeah. <laughs> I was saying to her that, you know, we, we sort of have this expectation or I had this perhaps naive expectation that we live and work in this global village and everybody is going to want to cooperate with you and work with you and, you know, sort of a geography yeah. doesn't matter because we, for instance, work with people from all over the world. Yeah. And um, yeah, sometimes the time zones are a bit tricky to work around, but apart from that, it's okay. And then to come to realize that, oh, wait, hold on, that's not actually the case for um, for some people. And uh, yeah, it, it's to rein myself back and realize that, oh, this is actually an issue. And okay, so now I know maybe for when I'm speaking to people in Canada, I should just put my Canadian number there and just leave it at that. Yeah, it's so interesting you mentioned that because I, I think I also removed you know, when you put your, like in South Africa, I know in the past, the, not in South Africa, but in the UK, you would, on your CV or resume, you would put your nationality. Um, and the reason being was because if you were on a work permit or whatever it may be, right? And I, I very early on decided to, because I'm half British and half South African, so I'm British national as well, or citizen, I decided to not put nationality South African on there and put just British, because I thought that, it would hinder my opportunities in some jobs, which is very, very, very bad and sad to say, right? Because I would, there would be a prejudice done, made instantly by someone seeing that I'm from South Africa, whether it be a racial one or a work ethic one or whatever it may be. Um, you just never know what people are going to judge. And it's hard enough getting people to really read through your CV or resume and choose you. You don't want there to be anything that's going to deter that, right? Um, and it's, it's something the same that I felt even here is that you, you have to, I feel like I, that's why it's, to me, it's so important meeting people. I'm such a person, um, in person or on the phone kind of person in general, if that makes sense, because you get judged instantly by just either your name. Sometimes people, you know, get not picked for jobs or roles because of their name, um, or where they're from. And it's also just, I think, again, leading back to this city being quite a clicky city, you don't want to, you know, find a reason to not fit in. And just for the fact that you potentially work with South African clients, people make the assumption that, oh, maybe she's going to be moving back to South Africa. So I can't commit to her because she won't be here long term. And that's also been something I struggled with a lot in my career was the question, well, you're from there, so you're going to go back there. I'm like, well, I don't know. You know, it's don't not give me a job because potentially in five years time, I might have to go back or whatever it may be. It's very hard as well. Pursuing your career and pushing yourself through when people always ask, you, you know, when are you going home or what are you doing? And that's with the whole globalization surprises me because I thought that people are transient. We were, you know, we're all moving around. We're, we're traveling, but a lot of people don't foresee it that way right and they don't want to hire people from international places because they're concerned that you're just going to up and leave which surprises me I'm not going to up and leave so quickly you know that's a big change in itself um so yeah it's you face those challenges in general just being from somewhere else right yeah I don't know maybe it was like a bias on my part as well assuming that people would want to work with people just from wherever and I thought you know also yeah. with now every, everybody's sort of working online and you don't even sometimes really ask, you know, where are you from? Because everybody's just working online and we're, we're on Zoom most of the day, for example, yeah. depending on your industry. So it's not it's not really that much of a problem. As I said, apart from organizing around time zones, it was yeah, never exactly. But, uh, but uh, and I've now come to realize that actually this, this is an issue for some people and that's something I need to be cognizant of. Yeah. <laughs> going forward because uh, the woman that this, this woman that I'm, I'm referring to now is uh, yeah she, so she's not even in Vancouver she is in British Columbia but yeah so so obviously she took great offense she didn't ask me about the Middle East number <laughs> yeah that's so interesting so the South African one was the problem <laughs> yeah so I, oh. thought I, I, about this I thought you'd probably think it was pretty funny but yeah I thought, uh, interesting yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty sad because I just I'm trying to work out what assumption was made, right? In 
in that. And it, it to me, it actually should add value. It shows that you work with different people and you can. I think to me, that's something I always try and sell when I'm interviewing is that I have worked with different cultures. I have worked in different countries. And I think that's a positive, a massive positive, actually, because it shows that you have had to, you know, break down barriers of communication. You've had to adjust the way you work. And to me, it, that stems into every avenue of the business when you're when you're in a round table trying to solve a problem. Um, yeah, it just I, to me, it's a benefit, a huge benefit. Yeah, and, and I think that, yeah, it, it's such an, an interesting dynamic. So especially as, as a woman coming into different countries, so you, you've got to fight like different biases and yeah. you've spoken about, for instance, toning down your accent. One of the things that I feel like we should perhaps mention to people is that South Africans don't have one single accent. It is a culturally and racially diverse country. Um, so, for example, Candace mentioned that she uh, that uh, her heritage is British as well. And uh, for me, I am fifth generation South African. And my my ancestors, my family came from India. So they came from India in the 1800s. And yeah. it is home to the largest population of Indian people outside India, which people don't right. realize. Either. No, they don't know. <laughs> There are a whole lot of assumptions that are made, and South Africa is known around the world as the rainbow nation. So it's not like you're going to find one accent. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, in different provinces, people have different accents as well. Um, and for Candice and me, we sound sort of more English than the rest yeah. of the country. Um, who sound but more Afrikaans, and, and you can hear the Afrikaans influence in their accents, perhaps. But whatever the case may be, is South Africans don't all sound the same. So, no. you know, there's a distinct South African accent, like there is a Canadian or an American or whatever the case may be. So people, yeah, that, that's also a bias that I feel that we should mention <laughs> to yeah. people in the series as well. And um, yeah, like, so just, yeah, don't tar people with the same brush if they're from, from a specific country. And um, just look for, you know, and, and I think that, Candice, I think you'll agree with me here, but if you don't know, just ask somebody. They're not going to be offended. They, they actually prefer so you. Wouldn't you prefer if somebody asked you, hey, Candice, could you tell me a bit more about where you're from or um, you know, what your experience has been and then, then for them just to make assumptions? Yeah, it's so true. And you're so right about the accents being like I said right in the beginning how people would be like oh well you when they say where you're from or no they won't actually even ask me where I'm from they're like oh we're we're in Australia you're from I'm like well not Australian first of all <laughs> and then it's like oh where in the UK you're from and I'll be like no I'm not I'm South African and it, it just it, the instant reaction is you don't sound it it's not like oh where in South Africa is it you know your your accent sounds interesting or I've never heard an accent South African accent like that or the instant thing is like, oh, you don't sound it. And then I have to feel like I have to back myself up by going, well, my dad's British. I lived in the UK for 10 years, so maybe. And I'm justifying it. And I, I realize now, why do I do that? Why do I justify to make them feel better about them pretty much insulting me and saying I don't sound South African? And I realize more and more how I'm accommodating them and not me. And and I, I, I'm actually just having a revelation now on how I should approach that a lot differently, right? Because I should say to them, well, I do have a South African accent. I just have a different twang or I'm from a different area. Area, And if you have another South African friend, they might be Afrikaans speaking, like you said, or they might have an, an Indian descent or, you know, they, they, we have 11 official languages in South Africa, right? So it's bound to happen that we're all going to sound slightly different just based on even like you say region but even just our heritage and where we where our family are from um, and where we've also lived and our upbringing so yeah it's very hard to I, I find sometimes I struggle standing proud and tall and saying well I am I am South African and this is my accent and this is my South African accent although it's been you know influence so to speak to adjust culturally to break these biases right 
I've done that to accommodate everybody else, but this is still who I am and where I'm from, right? Yeah. And yeah, it's a pity you have to justify it in a way. Yeah, and I think that people also don't realize that sometimes when you move to a different country, and I'm not talking about Canada necessarily, I just mean wherever you are in the world, in order for sometimes for people to understand you, you, you do have to change your accent a little bit or just the way you pronounce things. So totally. Yeah. Perhaps like in the Middle East or or even in Canada, sometimes I feel like I've got to roll my R's a lot more than I uh, than I usually have to um, when speaking to somebody in the UK or in South Africa because yep. they take it up a lot easier. Whereas here, I feel like I have to roll the R's so people can really get what I'm saying. Otherwise, yep. you know, people are like, "Sorry, could you repeat that?" And like, especially when you're reading back numbers, I don't know, Candace, have you ever found that when you're reading back numbers, people are like, what? And then you've got to say four, not four. It's mm-hmm. weird. I haven't faced the numbers one. Um, for me, it was, um, yeah, I feel like also with South Africans, we tend to push our words all together into one word. Sometimes we talk really fast and um, one thing I realized in the UK when I used to answer the phone and someone would say, you know, how are you doing? And I would be, I would respond by saying good and you. And no, I would have silence on the other side of the phone. And I've just been, I was thinking, I've just asked you, how are you doing? And the person wouldn't respond. And I realized good and you is not something that a lot of people hear. It's like good in yourself or I'm well in yourself or whatever it may be. And people would just hear good and you, good and you. Now, <laughs> I mean, that doesn't sound like a word or anything. And it took me a long time to shift that. And that's something that, again, to me is just was natural. That's what I, how I spoke back home. I'd be like, good and you, you would just, that's how you would speak. And it took me a long time to good and yourself and try and enunciate each single word that people would understand a bit better. Um, That's what I faced mainly was just enunciation, uh, trying to speak a little bit slower, even though I don't have a very harsh accent Um, and uh, and just finding ways to also pronounce, like you said, pronunciation of words is something I found uh, really funny because um, going from South Africa to the UK, you, you know, you have to change your language and the u- words you use, right? For in South Africa, people laugh. We always we say robots, which are actually traffic lights. So you have to change how you what words you use in your vocabulary to communicate. Uh, you would say mobile instead of a cell phone. Now I've had to shift again because now I'm here and they say cell phone. So I'm for ten years said mobile. So I've had to change my vocabulary again. And that's something else that people don't realize that we have to do that when you when you cross borders and across countries and you know you have to change how the way you, how you speak right to be able to be understood and not yeah. judged absolutely and I, and I think another big one is like for me it's something that I, I'm still working on, on on eliminating is saying shame to people shame <laughs> oh yeah, yeah shame is a that one I had to get out of my system a long time ago <laughs> And, and people actually get like offended when you say shame to them. And, and then they, they, they think that you are actually saying something yeah, terrible. Shame on you. <laughs> it's such a hard one to explain as well, because that's a very cultural thing, right? Um, shame. It's something we say in South Africa. It, yeah, people have not heard that. It's like we say shame as in it's a sort of, um, not, I don't want to say even pity. It's, it's, I feel for you, oh, but not in a bad way. It's like, oh, you know, and you can say it in different variations as well yeah. right um and I had to explain that as well here yeah, being like I'm not saying pity or shame on you or it's not a bad thing so to speak it's actually supposed to be a bit more jovial um but yeah that one you have to just you can't say it anymore because people just don't understand yes. it. I, I'm, I'm working on eliminating that one but the problem is yeah. like when you say South Africans and then and again you're like oh wait they do understand what that means and then you kind of slip back into the habit so true <laughs> so true <laughs> You're quite good at it Candice so that's good so next when I speak to you I will remember yeah <laughs> yeah so sorry so, so to return to your cross-cultural career um yeah. one of the I'd really like you to to touch on and to discuss a bit more is like 
what kind of advice would you give to people who are um, starting off in a new country, uh, embarking on a new journey? Perhaps like maybe they've come into a new country and like you, they've landed in a career that's completely different. Uh, can you give can you give us some advice and and you know just things that people don't necessarily think about? You know, give them some food for thought. Yeah, sure. I think for me what I've learned is that it's important to be accepting of you know if you're the person moving to another country you have to respect obviously the culture of where you've moved to and so the first thing is showing your acceptance of that culture and trying to understand and um, ask questions you know I remember moving here originally and people kept on saying a took mentioning a took and I like I don't know what they're talking about and I could have just kept quiet and googled it or whatever I wouldn't even know how to spell it to be honest um but it was just asking questions like oh what is what is that what are you mentioning or and they would explain to me what it was and I was like oh that's a beanie and so I I would say oh that's what we call a beanie and I I would learn a bit more where did that word come from or what like why did why did someone come up with that name versus a beanie and try and show a bit more respect and understanding of where you are, right? Um, And then I think that's number one, it's really important to do that, to show your um, acceptance of where you're living because you've chosen to live in this different country, right? Um, But then also something that I've really, I stand behind is being true to who I am and where I'm from and my history, although it's, multicultural so to speak um I like to advertise that you know I like to be I'm proud of where I am from and where I've been and uh small things like pronounce the way you pronounce my name it was like a huge thing for me in the UK people would say Candice and although that is how British people would pronounce that name Candice they would say Candice I said to them I won't allow it like I want you to pronounce my name the way that I I pronounce it and the way where I'm from so for me I had to teach them to be accepting of my culture and the way you pronounce the word my way for them to say my name and I I stood on that really hard and some people didn't like that but I thought this is me standing a little bit more firm in where I'm from and who I am and not allowing someone to pronounce my name incorrectly right because it's my my name and so I think that's important to also find that balance of um standing your ground of who you are and where you're from and but sharing that with the people right so like I would tell a story that oh in South Africa there is one girl who likes to be called Candice Candice Hillebrand I don't know if you remember that (laughs) and I I used to be like oh we just everyone disliked her because she was so stuck up that she had to have her name pronounced this different way right (laughs) and I said to them you know, you've got to make sure you understand where I come from, that that offends me if you pronounce my name that way, because that's not correct for me. And so, yeah, little things like that. And and also just explaining myself maybe a little bit more. Um, unfortunately, you have to do that because people that maybe haven't ever worked with someone from your culture or been to your country or whatever that may be, they don't understand. Maybe they don't, they won't understand your you and the way you work so I've had to like I say explain why I'm so direct or that I'm not being mean or offending you this is just my culture and I will try my best to you know communicate in a way that doesn't offend you obviously but you have to understand I'm not offending you if you if I was you would probably know it because it would be like a next level, but I, you know, I have to I have to stand my ground. And I think that's what people need to do, but more is share where they're from a little bit. Um, I think people hopefully will be open to that and accepting of that a bit more. And it just, it it's exciting. I think when you meet someone from somewhere else, I would think, um, and hopefully that's what when you go to a new place and your new job, they would be more accepting of you from being somewhere else and having a different culture and a different upbringing um so yeah I think it's 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 the combination of being accepting on that side but also standing true to who you are because I I felt like I mentioned when I was asked to tone down my accent 
I was young then as well. And so I thought, oh my gosh, I have to, I have to do this because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get a raise or I'm not going to be able to grow up the, grow up the lat- ladder at this firm or, you know, they're not going to choose me because um, I'm not going to sound correct on the phone. And then after some time, I was just like, well, no, sorry. <laughs> if my accent turns down naturally, fine, but I'm not going to fully change the way that I speak to adhere to to the way you want me to right so I think it's just yeah standing up for yourself as well as finding that balance where you can still be true to who you are but also like you know not, I, don't, I don't like to say fit in because I don't believe we should fit in we should stand out we are different and we're from somewhere else but just to be able to um, work alongside in that culture Absolutely. And I think that's brilliant advice. I think it's it's so true. And one of the things that I, I really appreciated about what you've just said is I think people don't realize how much of your identity is tied to your name, the way people pronounce it. And, you know, that's, that is your identity. This is tied to your family. It's tied to your history. It's tied to your friendships and actually all, all the relationships that you've had up until this point. And so if, if they want to change it, or they want to ask you to do something different with your name. Uh, that's not that that that's something that yeah, I think a lot of people should stand firm on and and say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not prepared to do that. This is my identity that you're asking me to change. Yeah. And so I, I feel like also when when you stake a claim and say, listen, this is where I'm from. And and for me in particular, I felt like I I, I do say that I'm South African and I that that is who I am. I can't reject that as my identity because that is the country that I, I come from and you know I, I identify myself as a South African because I was born and bred there you know so yeah I think that um when when we talk about breaking biases we need to understand also and try to empathize with people's cultural identities their nationalities and just how they also identify themselves so yeah I, I think it's also as, as much as if you're an expat or you're an immigrant, you are going into a different country. I don't think, as you've said, Candice, you should also allow you, yourself to be subsumed by a culture that, mm. that, yes, you should immerse yourself in the culture, but you shouldn't allow yourself to be lost either. And right. yes, you should absolutely have boundaries. And that's really important. And, and so Candice, uh, with you now having changed careers you and you obviously still now work in quite a, well in a, in a very competitive career, in a very competitive market, in particular here in Vancouver. And um, what would you say the sort of biggest challenges you face are with, with regard to bias, I suppose, in, in the field that you work in now, or you can also speak to past experiences if you if you want to. And 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 particularly what I'm interested in hearing about is like. Your, your bias, has it, has it been sort of a gender-based bias as well, do you think? Yeah, so to, to touch on first um, with my new, my new uh, career in real estate, I've actually, I'm leaning on that bias of being from somewhere else. I'm actually embracing it. And, and I feel like that's why I'm so excited about this job is because I am reaching out to everyone else who is not from here. So my focus is actually dealing with um, clients who are not from Vancouver. And I don't, I don't mean not from Canada. I mean like not from Vancouver. So I, I feel as though I have now embracing the fact that I'm from a different culture because I am targeting clients who feel the same way as I do. They've moved to the country. They have no idea how things work they feel alone they don't have a network um and so I have shifted my gears to really actually embrace the fact that I'm from somewhere else right and and that's something huge for me and I I think that's what's working for me as well is that I'm connecting more with international people people who are from outside of Vancouver from say like Winnipeg even or you know Calgary whatever it may be who are finding also finding trying to find their way through the city um so that's been good and that's the positive side 
of the job that I'm doing now and actually just embracing that I'm not from here. It's kind of like, hello, I'm the one, I'm the realtor that's not from here. I'm from somewhere else. I can try and explain like I have a lot of clients who are from the UK and the terminologies are very different with regards to buying a house. And I can explain, well, this is actually how we say it in the UK. This is how it's said here. And they're like, oh, I understand that now. So it's, it actually benefits me a lot in my business. Um, with regards to breaking the biases um, in, in, in not just culturally, but also in um, like gender uh, roles, for example, um, I can definitely touch on that from being in the UK. Like I said, it was decided to just get going to the financial industry, which was um, predominantly it's male dominated in most countries. Um, and I found that even in my first role at the property investment firm, property, sorry, auction firm, um, all the sales team were men and all the administrative team were female. And that was actually the place where they told me to turn down my accent because the male clients thought I was being very rude. Um, and I was, for me, actually, I thought I was being really good and direct because you needed to be in that you, you're negotiating prices on properties and repossess properties. And you had to be really firm and direct with some people. But because I was a female and being firm and direct, that was not appropriate right um and because I was administrative I had to be yeah, obviously customer comes first client comes first all that but there had to be some pushback and I was I was the one being told to tone down the way I talk to people and not not encouraged or guided on maybe how to be a better salesperson or how to pursue my role as a sales person because I had that gut so and so again I, I hit I hit a wall when I said I want to pursue potentially going into the sales side of the business. And it was sort of a shock and horror, right? Because, well, no, you don't have the experience and probably I don't have the balls, so to speak, <laughs> to do the job, which I thought was a shock because I do have the character to do the job. I just need the training as well. And so that was really my first experience of um being a female in a male dominated industry and hitting a barrier. Um, and then I decided to go into finance, which is even more so um, just to prove a point. Um, but yeah, I found that, like I said, in, in the firm that I worked at, uh, investment management firm in London, the US based one, it was amazing because I had a female mentor who had pushed and broken those biases in her in her tenure at this firm in the US um, and was head of trading and naturally just ended up hiring females for the trading desk. And although we were all female trading desk, we have to obviously trade with other companies, right? So you're, you're trading with other banks and they're all male trading desks, fully male trading desks. And uh, it was interesting because we were considered soft in a way because we're females, but we we weren't. And what another thing we realized is that a lot of the entertaining and um, networking that was done with traders was very male dominated. So it was golf or going to watch the rugby, which to be honest, I mean, I like golf and I like watching rugby, but you weren't invited because you were a female, right? You were thought that you don't play golf or you don't like to watch rugby. So it's just the boys are going to go boys club. And for us and my colleagues, we loved sports. We actually, one of the girls even played rugby herself in university. And so we were trying to push those biases just in that regard. Right. And saying that, well, no, we'll come with to go watch the rugby and all the, you know, counterparts of the banks were like, what these girls are coming with? Like, our, our one goal on our trading desk doesn't even come with. And so we were really excited about that. And I, I loved, I felt like we were like a little gang of, you know, just pushing that bias out of the way, right? And saying like, you're making an assumption of who we are as people because of, of our gender. Um, and that's not correct. You haven't even spoken to us or asked us. So that was, that was empowering for me to be, 
um, in amongst that team, right? I found, I learned a lot about, again, standing up for who I am and what I enjoy or what's true to me, right? And pushing that bias aside. Um, and again, that's where you, when you ask about the advice is actually sharing that about yourself. You know, telling people, like I'm very verbal about who I am and where I'm from and what I like. And I, I always, when I meet colleagues or people um, socially, I will advertise that I like sports and I like rugby. And, you know, I, I can stand amongst the men, so to speak. I don't, you know, just because I'm female, it doesn't mean I don't like these things. And so I think that's important as well, just to, to say that. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I really, yeah, I, I like the way that you have phrased this so that people understand that, you know, we don't have to accept the biases that are pushed our way either. And and I think it's it was, I think one of the tragic things in, in what you've said is that when somebody told you to tone down your accent when you were that young, actually, and you, you had sort of just entered the workforce, it's not actually useful feedback it's not constructive feedback i mean what is it you know and and actually yeah. the issue wasn't your accent but it was actually the fact that you were being direct and that you were speaking in mind and that yeah you you, you were actually doing well at your job because you were doing yeah. what I hired you to do but they just didn't like the way that you were doing it and so they yeah. used like, culture or you know what whatever against you just because you would but you were doing exactly what they wanted you to do anyway and yeah. um it's probably for the best that you left that place and then yeah got a thing that you wanted to do anyway despite the yeah. fact that you could do it so yeah it's uh I, I think that this also speaks to the fact that um one of the conversations that we had yesterday was about breaking internal bias your own internal bias and i think that you are such a poster child for the fact that yeah, you, you never let other people's biases affect your own self-worth, your self-identity. And yeah, it's it's so important that um, we, we stand tall in what we believe in and show that to the world. So yep. thank you for being a, a great role model and reminding people how important it is to maintain your values, maintain your integrity, and also you know, push back against people and their beliefs. And yeah, uh, that's so important. And not only in the in the business world, but in your personal life as well. Totally, I agree with that. And it's so true. I think it's taken me um, a long journey, obviously, to get to this point, right? And I, and I think it, yeah, I've made mistakes along the way as well, right? Like you've had to stumble to learn how to best stand like stand up for yourself right without um offending anybody else um and 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 finding ways and i think you, you use the right word was immerse yourself into the culture um because i also have to respect that i'm not from here i'm decided to live somewhere else right and and i need to respect the culture of where i am from and and immerse myself in it but also not lose where i'm from and share you know share that with other people so that they can learn a bit more about other other cultures and other ways of communication or other ways of um interacting so i think that's really important for anybody to do that and yeah don't don't let yourself get lost completely trying to fit in because it's you, you won't, right? Yeah, that's so true. And yeah, uh, Candace, I'd like to thank you so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. But before you go, I just want to remind people that not only am I sharing your links as, so people can contact you directly um, with this post, but Candace, would you mind just telling people what the best way is to reach you and also what kind of topics you're, you'd be interested in discussing with them because Candace is, she is in the property market and she's also very keen on supporting people who are first time home buyers. Yeah, yeah. Candace, so yeah, you, you take it away. Yeah, so you can contact me um, any form of communication. So either via email or phone number and Jati will 
welcome to share that. I'm also on Instagram. My Instagram is at Candice J. Johnson. Um, you're welcome to message me through there. Uh, you can also search me on Facebook. I've Candice Johnson Real Estate is on there as well. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I focus on first time buyers in Vancouver, but also upsizers. Um, anybody who's just interested in um, on, on the business side, you know, buying a property, getting on the property ladder, just wanting to know how to do that, where to get started. My my whole premise is education. So I'm always happy to just meet with people and chat with people about what it takes to do that here. Um, but yeah, if anybody also has any questions about pursuing work in the city or um, wants advice on you know how to navigate a situation or just talk about anything, because sometimes that's all you need is just to have a conversation with someone else who is has had a similar experience or it's also not from here because it is difficult moving countries and immersing yourself and and shifting gears and I think that it's important to connect with people who are going through similar experiences um, so you can learn from each other um, so yeah I'm open to anybody reaching out about anything whether real estate or not real estate, if it's just about wanting to chat about how to get into, into the industry here or even just communicate and connect with people here. It's just, I mean, I would learn from people as well. So I'm happy to have anybody reach out to me and chat. So always happy to meet new people. Thank you so much, Candice, for your time today and also for all the wonderful advice. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody who's listening to this interview appreciates it too. So yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to connecting with you again and collaborating with you and uh, hoping that we can have more talks in the near future.